what people say that the problem is, is that the swamp was not drained far enough. Well, maybe that's one of the questions that we can ask. Because with me on the phone right now is former President of the United States, Donald Trump. Mr. President, how are you? I agree with that. The swamp was not drained. I drained it a lot. Yes. But, but nobody knew it was going to be that deep and murky. Well, and then some of the people said that the way to drain the swamp this time around, you know, it's actually a friend of mine said this to me to ask you this question. So if you were able to get it back into the White House, just like you would with a business, you know, sometimes you take over a new right. business and you find you have to just sort of clean house, get rid of a lot of people and bring in fresh blood. Right. Okay. Would you do that with the bureaucracy as yeah, president? Can you I do would. that? Sure. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. You know, you have civil service rules. You have a lot of different things going on. You have unions all over the place. But the answer is, uh, generally speaking, you can. You can at the top. And I largely did that. But remember, uh, you know, I had, uh, we had this incredible victory. And I got down and recommendations were made by people that you respect, but you didn't know very much. And some of those recommendations you didn't like. Look, we had a great group. I mean, you know, Lighthizer, a lot of the people, the trade people, we did incredibly on, et cetera. Uh, but uh, now I know everybody. I know the good ones and the bad ones. Right. Uh, Barr didn't have the courage that he needed. He was afraid of being impeached, so he didn't do the job that he should have done. You know, compare that with uh, the people that you uh, see around. <laughs> you have uh, Barr was just not there. He wasn't, he wasn't the right guy. And a couple of others. But generally speaking, we had very good, and we did drain a lot of the swamp. Right. What but, is that? You know, in- I also was against, Len, I was against fake narratives, and you saw the, the whole thing going on with Durham now where that was a concocted campaign on Russia, Russia, Russia. Right. Yeah. So I'm fighting off phony campaigns. All these phony campaigns are being fought off like crazy and successfully fought off. But, uh, you know, the level of dishonesty on the other side was incredible. I went through two fake impeachments. I went through the Mueller bullshit. And it's, uh, you know, it's a terrible thing that we had to endure. And we endured it. A lot of people said nobody else could have. And it was all made up stuff. The uh, perfect phone call. You get impeached over a perfect phone call. So Uh with that and with everything else, it was uh, pretty amazing. We rebuilt the military. We cut tax at the lowest level we've ever done. We've, you know, bigger than the Reagan tax cuts. Uh, the border was the most secure it's ever been, ever in the history of our country. Now it's the worst. We had, uh, we were energy independent. Think of that, energy independent, and compare that to what we have now. Well, we're going to Venezuela and asking for energy. We were energy independent. Right. Now they want to get rid of your states. If you look, your state's energy, you're a big energy state. I'll be there very soon, and I look forward to that. That'll be great. Right. Well, let's, let's take a look at also besides draining the swamp, which means getting rid of the bureaucracy. Let's take a look at what I think yeah. is your strategy uh, with these elections. You've been endorsing people all over the country. Some have done very well. And it seems that right. what you would want is to have a presidency where members of the House and Senate, and we can get rid of the Democrats in this upcoming election. It looks like we can really clean House because of how bad of a shape the country's in right now. But then you would also want fresh blood in the House and Senate and not the same old, same old establishment Republicans. Well, you have guys like Mitch McConnell. You sort of stuck with him. Uh, I endorsed him at his request. He was losing, but, you know, it was between him and the Democrats. I don't know. What do you do there? Explain that one. But, you know, he's uh, ra- he raises money. That's all he does. He raises money, hands it to the senators. Uh, and I actually tell senators, take it. You know, what are you going to do? If they can't raise right. money like that. So he raises money because of his position. That's it. And so you you get stuck with some things. But, look, we have a really good chance of taking over the House and very big. It could be very big. I mean, I've read as high as 68 seats. So if it was 30 seats or 25 seats, that's a lot. But we could have big, because of how badly they're doing, we also have a chance, a smaller chance, of taking over the Senate. We had a great victory last night with Herschel Walker. I had a great night by any standard. I was, uh, I guess we were 24, I think we were 24 and 3 or 4, and, you know, they only they only count the ones that you lose, but they were hard races. They right. were hard races, winning against incumbent governors. And you have a governor that hasn't been too helpful, I, I must tell you. Right. 
All right, well, let's take a look at who you've endorsed here in the state of Wyoming, Harriet Hageman, who I've known for quite a while and I respect. And let me tell you, Mr. Trump, if you're ever in court, you do not want her as the lawyer on the opposition. However, yes. i got to tell you, though, before you and she met, she had said some things about you. So when people drive into Casper, yeah. Wyoming, there's a big billboard, and it has Harriet's smiling face, and it says, Hageman on Trump, the weakest, racist, and xenophobic. Has something changed between your relationship with her over these years? Well, look, I, I took that. I saw that, obviously, before I did it, and I had a choice. And I had to pick somebody that's going to win. Okay. Uh, i become close to her. She didn't know me. I never met her. She never met me. And uh, I, I have the, you know, the, the problem with that is, especially when you go back to 2016, nobody knew me. So if I went by that standard, I could never endorse anybody. Because sure. I've had, look at J.D. Vance. I endorsed him. He, he made Harriet look like a baby in terms right. of what he said. But he's the one that's going to win the race. I have to pick people that are going to oh, win okay. races. So what about Harriet? Smart, st- I can tell smart. you personally what about Harriet stands out for me because again I've known her for a number of years. But you have Go quite ahead. a few people to talk to before you pick someone. So why Harriet? Uh, because I re- and I had some good people. I really did have some good people, but I just felt that she was uh, very good. And your wonderful senator up there really gave her a very uh, who is a tremendous person, by the way, uh, was very strong on her, wanted her very badly. And I had people in Wyoming that really wanted Harry. You know, they were asking me, please, please. They were pushing hard for her, much harder than anybody else. And I have to let that play a role, you know. And I think she's done very well. From what I hear, her campaign has been great. I'm going to see her on Saturday. But her campaign has been very strong. Uh, She's doing very well. And, uh, you know, I listened to people from Wyoming in making that pick. And they felt very, very strongly about it. They liked that. Harriet is uh, a strong woman who did very well, and she's supposed to be a great lawyer, I've heard. Yeah, so I've heard. Well, she's taken on the EPA in the state of Wyoming on several cases you ought to ask her about, and won over the years. So in that sense, it's worth it. But let's take a, a look at your nemesis here in the state of Wyoming, something that we never saw coming because she's always been one of the most conservative members of the House of Representatives, Liz Cheney, who's done very well for the state of Wyoming. But then when she decided to vote for impeachment and then get on the January 6th committee, a lot of us didn't, didn't see that coming and were shocked what happened there? Well, it's an amazing thing, and I did something uh, for the family that I did for myself, really, because I've heard that Scooter Libby was treated horribly by Bush, that Bush did not take proper care of him, uh, didn't give him a pardon, and I gave him a pardon without even talking about that. But he was very close to the Cheneys, and I gave Scooter Libby a pardon. That was a big thing. Cheney couldn't get, Cheney uh, Sr., VP Cheney, couldn't get that done with Bush. Bush didn't want any part of it. He was afraid. Uh, He thought it would look terrible. And he was in jeopardy. He was actually in very big jeopardy, Bush. And uh, Scooter Libby helped him a lot. And and Scooter Libby paid a very big price. And uh, Cheney, the Cheney family felt so strong. And I did that. And I didn't do it for her or for anybody. I did it because it was the right thing to do. He got taken advantage of it, as so many people do, frankly. And I took care of it. And I was very surprised, you know, and I disagree with her on a lot of things because she'd like to be in a war in every country. And I, as you know, uh, I'm the one that kept Russia out. There was no, there was no Russia, Ukraine. That would have never, as an example, led. that would have never, ever happened. That disaster that we're in right now. And I disagree with her on things. But what happened is all of a sudden she was just radical left because she's now the Democrats best asset. They, they quote her all the time. They say Republican. Liz Cheney, and then, you know, hit it with bombs. And, uh, no, she's just gone bad. She's gone bad, really bad, surprising. The okay. Republicans in the House, good people, some really tough, good people, people that you like and support, and they just can't stand her. And right. she's just uh, not not been good. You know, it's interesting. So I don't know if you know this, but Wyoming, because I won big states. I won Alabama by massive numbers, I think 45 points. Wyoming was my number one state oh, yeah. in the union for 
Margin well, of victory. Did you know that? Let me give you an idea. Not only per capita did you get more votes in Wyoming than anywhere else, so huge supporting, which, again, is why we were so surprised that, you know, Cheney voting on impeachment. That, that blew us away. It was so in yeah. line for you. But also, when you arrive here, per capita, there's more guns per person than any other state. So this is about the safest place you will be. Your Secret right. Service will have absolutely nothing to do while they're here. They're going to be that right. bored because of all the supporters <laughs> you're going to be around. Also, I know that Ivanka shows up with her husband. They land in Cheyenne, and they go visit Saratoga. They right. love vacationing out here. If you've never been out to Saratoga, right. it's absolutely beautiful and a lot of, out there. Yes, and a lot of people do. Yeah. It's an incredible place. I love yeah. it. Okay, so what and are you going to talk energy, about? And they want to take, you know, they want to take away all your energy. Yeah, stuff, that, that's that's, that's like part of what I want to know what you're going to talk about, because Wyoming is coal, gas, and oil, and we have done a very yeah. good job. In fact, when, when I hear uh, states like California... Yeah, especially Los Angeles, California, they yell and scream about saving the planet. I think the reason that they believe the planet is being destroyed is look at their city. They're destroying the planet. You come out to They're Wyoming destroyed. where we have coal, gas, and oil, and it is one of the most well-kept states that you will ever see out here, even though we're mining right. and drilling. And yet, so here we are ready to supply the country with much-needed energy and lower those prices, by the way. So how do we get back on track with uh, good energy, reliable energy, and affordable energy in America? Well, I'm going to open it up, and we're going to open it up strongly. And, you know, it should have never been closed. Look, they just ended two of the biggest leases, oil and gas leases, anywhere in the country. They just ended it last week, and nobody can even believe it. Right. I actually think they don't know what they're doing. They're either grossly incompetent or they're, they've got a plan to destroy our nation. Okay. But uh, we're going to open it up and open it up big. I suspect that's one of the reasons why Wyoming gave me such a tremendous vote. And, mm -hmm. you know, frankly, all of the energy states did. Right. Uh, frankly, all of the states. I think actually all of the states did because our elections are a disaster, yeah. what they well, do with uh, our well, let's, elections. Well, I have a disaster. few minutes left here with you, so let's real quick get people to the rally. So it's going to be at the Ford Center in Casper, Wyoming. And people have been right. asking me where to get a hold of tickets. Do they go to your website for that? I think they do, and I yeah. think there's a lot of information out there. I hear the crowd is going to be great. Yes. I hope you're going to yeah. be there, Glenn, by Well, the in way. fact, your spokes lady, who I love talking to, she's been on the program a couple of times here. I asked her to pass a message along. Wyoming has had only one traffic jam in its history, and that was the eclipse. <laughs> the eclipse when everybody was trying to get home. So the second big oh, traffic wow. jam is everybody okay. trying to That's leave good. your rally and head home. That's good. Well, we're going to have a big one. Yeah, okay. And, so uh, Ford look, Center. I have, a lot of, I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends there. We're going to have a big one. I hope okay. you're going to be there. Uh, well, it's going to start at 11 o'clock, and it goes, What I, I know your son's going to speak. Junior's going to speak while you're there, right? My son is going to speak, and okay. I'll be going on a little bit later. I'll be landing and going on uh, right on time a little bit later, and... Mm -hmm. uh, I hear the crowd is really big. Oh uh, yeah, it, it's you know, uh, probably going to be overflow. Yeah, these big open. These yeah, these big open areas. You got a lot of people coming. Oh you know, yeah, yeah, and that's not easy for a state this side. So okay, hope to see no, you on it's, Saturday. It's, and as they very uh, good, I'll, I'll throw it out in advance. Welcome to Wyoming. Well, thank you very much. I'll see you then. Okay. And I'm really looking forward to it. I love uh, you know I love the state. It's just an incredible state, incredible place, and. You're right about these Democrat-run cities. They're so horrible and yeah, they are. so unrepresentative of, of, of what we should have. All right. So thanks a lot, Glenn. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on the program this morning. It's Wake Up Wyoming. Roxanne Watson is on a mission. Hello. How are you doing today? She wants more people to register as organ, eye, and tissue donors. Are you an organ donor? Yes, I am. Yay. My goal is to sign up the most people in the United States. <laughs> what drives her? Roxanne's own life was saved through the gift of a heart transplant, made possible by an organ donor. I decided that day that I was...